In this video, I'll be going over the main ideas from Ryan Cohen's recent interview, as well as sharing my own personal thoughts. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below, but I'm gonna go ahead and get right into it. So he starts off talking about comparisons from his time at Chewy to now his time at GameStop. So at Chewy, it was a ground up operation, had absolutely nothing, was creating something out of nothing. So it was really just from the bottom up. Whereas with GameStop, he was taking a stake in a company that has a name, it's been out there, but it was very under underdeveloped right, in terms of technology, in terms of employees, and just the business as a whole. So he saw an opportunity to create a transformation for a company that had a strong brand name, but just not the growth that it really should have, and just that the gaming industries evolved so much and just had so much happening over the past 10 years, whereas over the past 10 years, GameStop's just been struggling. So having said that, he said, okay, well, I wanted to buy in because one, I found it to be undervalued at that point when I started buying in. And two, basically, hey, this is gonna be a challenge. I like tough things. Everybody's overlooking this. I think this is a great opportunity. And then he also went on to say that the opposite would be um, IPOs. A lot of people go, ooh, IPO, I want it, I want it. Everybody tries to get it at once. Whereas he's more interested in something that's like, hey, a lot of people aren't looking at this. I think this could be a play right here. And that's why he got into GameStop. Then an interesting quote he had mentioned that I personally think had to do with short selling. I could be totally wrong. You could tell me what you think in the comments. But he said, it's hard to turn around a brick and mortar retailer that is under the kind of pressure GameStop was and continues to be. Could be more of a general statement, could have been a statement in regards to something else, but I honestly think it's the pressure of short selling that he's alluding to, but maybe not. So next point, um, when he was asked about January of 2021, I did really like his answer here. He pretty much didn't say like, oh yeah, it was like this, or I was thinking that. He just said, hey, when I joined the board, I came into this sort of long term. I, when I bought into the company, I had a long-term vision. So January 2021 was noise, is essentially what he was saying. It was a lot of commotion in the moment, but that did lead to the conversation of, quote, board drama. And he said, ultimately, like why he got rid of the board was there was just a lot of drama there and the people didn't seem to have the best interest of the company in mind. And that's ultimately why he just kind of canned everybody and was like, look, I wanna focus on the company. I wanna focus on work. That was definitely a reoccurring theme in the interview with the work. So we know Ryan Cohen likes to work hard. He also mentions that he likes hiring people that have a chip on their shoulder, something tough maybe they've overcome in their life that's made them stronger, made them more willing to work harder and just do the absolute best, be the absolute best at whatever they do. That seems to be something Ryan Cohen really, really values and that's something I got out of the interview. That was from the beginning of the interview. Then in the middle, he goes on to talk about his tweets a lot. I'm not gonna get too into that. I'm just gonna say that I definitely think some of them really do have a hidden meeting and just a low key message of like hey individuals should look into this or maybe be aware of this but that's just my thought because he must know that so many individuals just heavily analyze whatever he tweets he could tweet an emoji and people have like a 10 page analysis on it right so it does mention like at the very end too that he really likes the sense of humor that individuals have and just all the enthusiasm around the company. So he does make that as like a kind of final remark. So I really did think that was nice, a like kind of head nod to individuals that just like the stock and maybe some individuals such as myself that just create content, create due diligence, just create memes, whatever you create, right? Create NFTs, which is for the GameStop platform now. So you're helping utilize the company's product to an extent. I know I've been trying to tell everyone now since the GameStop wallet's been out. I'm like, hey, download the wallet. I'll activate it, activate it for you. I'll send you a couple silly NFTs. Even if you like barely ever use it, who cares? Maybe one day you're gonna wanna use it for something else. You'll already have it. Maybe you want to get into crypto, you want to truly own your own assets, whatever it may be. So, you know, just trying to spread the good word, but that's just what I do. And last point I'll touch on is his points on interest rates. He said interest rates change how businesses allocate capital. So for that reason, short-term cash flows are now much greater value than long-term cash flows because you want shorter-term cash flow coming in quicker is essentially what he's saying in a higher interest rate environment. Otherwise, people don't want to invest if there's no strong cash flows, right? It's not good for the business itself in terms of investment because there's just no cash flow coming in short term and in investors can say, okay, well, I might as well just invest in a bond or a high yield savings and get a guaranteed return. 
So individuals like myself and maybe like yourself might still buy the stock anyway. However, I'm just saying that's on a grand scale and overall just GameStop does want to be profitable ultimately. And I think he's just saying, okay, well, we don't want to get in a situation where we have to take debt in a high interest rate environment. So GameStop is getting near profitability. And he literally says, yeah, they're cutting expenses aggressively. And I think that's evident through what they've done in just investing in technology, investing in employees. But don't forget too, they recently trimmed a lot of employees that were executives. They hired a ton for the transformation, but then they laid off like 20, 25% of them, I think like four or five months ago. So that barely even showed up in Q2's report. It will show up in Q3's report. So I expect lower general selling and general administrative costs. That's my theory at least, because if you cut a lot of these executives, that's where their costs of salary falls into. So in theory, that number should be lower as far as I'm aware. If I'm wrong, what can I say? I'm just sharing my personal thoughts and opinions. Thank you guys so much for watching. I honestly kind of had a hard time recording this uh, reaction video. Frustrated with myself, I'm getting it out so late. It's literally like a week later since he's done the interview, but just busy week with Thanksgiving and different things going on. But just gonna keep moving forward with the channel. Gonna put out some more stuff on DRS transfers and just what brokerage transfers are like in a very soon video. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.